Greetings from RE Plus 2024 in Anaheim. My name is Michael Schmelheim and I'm the Managing Director of Time News. And I'm very glad to be at the booth of Next Tracker and have with me Marco Garcia, Chief Commercial Officer of Next Tracker. Marco. Nice to see you again, Michael. Yes, yeah, so great to see you. Yeah. So great to see you. What a show. It's been a great show. It's, uh, it's excellent to be here. Again, I've been in, in, uh, doing trackers for 22 years. So uh, I've been at the RE Plus show every year back when it was the SPI, Solar Power International Show. Uh, it's terrific to be here with our team as well. Um, and yeah, we, we uh, continue to see growth in the tracker market. Yeah, that's what we want to start talking about here. So I think you're the market leader. I just, uh, we just reported that, about that in our, in our recent uh, tracker report at Time News. And, and we, you're doing that for, for eight years. You're the not market leader. Nine years in nine, a row now. Nine years now. Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that boring? <laughs> not boring at all. It's, uh, it's never boring to be the leader. So nine years as number one global tracker market share. Uh, one of the reasons we're able to maintain our leadership in the, in the tracker global market share is that we're focused on all the key tracker markets around the world. So number one tracker market is the United States, this market, very large market, good government incentives, very good applications, uh, strong EPC base, strong uh, asset owners that are focused on uh, the best technology and, and the best long-term performance. So we're very uh, strong in the U.S. number one market share. Uh, we're also focused in the Latin American market. Brazil has been a very large market for us. The rest of Latin America in Spain and the rest of Europe. The Middle East is growing, primarily in Saudi Arabia. India uh, has been a, a high growth market for us and Australia. So these key six key markets around the world we're focused on participating and providing a high level of customer service and technical solutions in all of these markets. That helps us win. Okay, wonderful. So. The, the global market has been growing incredibly over the years. So, so did trackers, right? So, so, so what's the reason actually the, the markets, customers are embracing trackers? Certainly. So in the financial model, uh, your tracking system is going to give you 20 to 25% more energy annually. Uh, when bifacial modules were introduced several years ago into the market, that increased uh, the benefits of trackers over fixed tilt. So it's, it's really financial model driven. Uh, on the utility scale, especially uh, in some of these markets where you're going to get the additional gain, the economics look better in the financial model. So uh, utility scale points to trackers, the DG, distributed generation, or, or CNI market, also a very strong tracker market for us. How do you see the further market for trackers, especially also when you look at markets where you have certain saturation also? I think can trackers also play there an important role when we look at in intelligence or kind of smoothening of, uh, of the, yeah, the flexibility that solar actually brings by nature? Certainly. So the, uh, you know, the tracker production curve, right? We, we, uh, once we track on sun, when the sun's come, come up high enough in the sky in the morning, we're tracking on sun, you get that production curve of, of steady peak production throughout the day until the sun goes down in the evening. And that matches well uh, with, uh, in the different markets, the, the energy production from trackers matches well to the load uh, in the markets where we're participating. So that, uh, that's always helpful. And uh, what we do uh, with our True Capture software is improve the performance as the, the curve is going up in the morning during backtracking. In the morning, we eliminate shading with our True Capture software, the same in the evening. And then during the day, during diffuse light events such as clouds, rain, et cetera, where, where you can't see the sun exactly, then we can back off and provide diffuse light tracking and improve performance during those uh, hours of the day or days of the year. So the, um, the True Capture software and our software innovations, again, helps us be a leader in the tracker market. Okay, let's, let's maybe talk about um, innovations and, and developments, uh, because there have been so many. Can you just kind of give us a slight overview about the most important? Certainly. The, the good old days, Michael, where you had a big flat uh, project site with a rectangle, you could put all your trackers. <laughs> those, those days don't exist anymore. It's hard to find those sites. So we're seeing more sites with undulating terrain and we launched a few years ago the XTR, the terrain following tracker. So we're basically allowing developers to go on to land that in, in many cases, uh, the land cannot be disturbed. There are certain environmental restrictions on the land. So we can follow the terrain north-south with our trackers 
and uh, minimize or eliminate grading and earth movement. So EPCs love to hear this, right? Whenever you can uh, minimize uh, civil works and earth movement, it uh, reduces your, your development time, your construction cycle, and we're able to get the trackers out there faster. We follow the terrain with our XTR software, and then we eliminate the shading once again. So terrain causes shading between the rows. We eliminate that shading with our, with our true capture software. Okay. Um, anything else? I think so. It's also about cost reduction, continued cost reduction. Uh, so on the one hand, it's great, of course, uh, that the module prices, at least not for the manufacturers, but at least for the EPCs and uh, the, the demand side, uh, that the prices have gone down quite a bit. So w what does that mean actually for, for trackers also? Also at, this, at some point, of course, also raw materials prices went up. So, so how, how are you actually contributing? Yeah, so we continue to see strong tracker demand in all the tracker markets that we discussed earlier. Lower module prices is good for the PV industry. There's, there's, uh, makes it more available for residential, for small commercial, for rooftop, carports, et cetera. So low PV prices help the market. We continue to see tracker demand, high tracker demand, even with uh, uh, reduced PV, PV prices. So the PV module costs go down, tracker demand is still there because you get that 20 to 25%, in some cases, 30% annual gain with the tracker versus fixed tilt still makes sense to do the tracker. And you bring the intelligence, right? So, Correct. So, okay. so by, by layering in our software, we try to make smarter trackers, wireless controls, our self-powered controller. It's basically a small brain in the center of that tracker that, uh, that we can control. Um, you know, uh, weather. Weather uh, is getting, there's more, uh, thanks, uh, thanks to climate change, or because of climate change, we're seeing much more extreme weather events and we've designed a tracker that is resilient long term. So high availability, tracking on sun as much as possible uh, despite wind events, and then of course defending the tracker. Here in the United States, uh, big deal is the hail, primarily in Texas and uh, uh, in that area of the market, there's a, a large hail alley, and we defend against hail with a product that we've innovated called, called the Hail Pro 75. We can crank all the way over to 70, 75 degrees, so almost vertical and the, the uh, angle of incidence with the hail protects those modules, right? So we've uh, had third-party validation, we've worked with insurance companies to ensure that uh, we are protecting those assets. Okay, wonderful, I think so. We, we also should talk a bit about uh, the consequences of the world unfortunately drifting apart. Uh, so that means uh, we have this geopolitical consequences, energy security, it's much more in the focus and solar is the fastest growing technology obviously takes takes part in this uh, so so how are you contributing how are you working on localization of, uh, of jobs of technology so we've uh, we've set up over 20 factories in the United States in order to bring our products closer to the project sites we try to be within one day's truck drive from any solar project in the United States uh, and that, uh, that, that local domestic content here in the U United States has helped us continue to maintain our leadership position. It's brought us closer to our asset owner customers who have large portfolios. Uh, we enter into VCAs or volume commitment agreements with those asset owners and we can make commitments on domestic, uh, uh, domestic content for those projects. Uh, it helps us secure those relationships long term. And then, again, the software that we layer in ensures optimal performance of those plants over the life of the plant. We always want to make sure we're getting the maximum energy production and we're protecting the assets. We want the asset to be available to track during all the hours of the day that it should be tracking. We also want to protect it in the event of, of weather events like hail. Okay, um, let's talk about uh, some, some other trend, also an important one, and that's sustainability, and I think there's a whole ESG picture, so there's transparency and there's many other topics of sustainability. Uh, how, how are you looking into that? So we have launched a low carbon tracker uh, here in the United States and uh, we, we have strong interest so far uh, in that product. It is at a slight premium, uh, the, the uh, low carbon tracker, uh, the, the raw material, the steel is going to cost a little more, uh, but we have uh, customers who uh, are requiring that in their portfolios and the economics make sense for them. 
so we're, we're adapting to that as well. I did want to, if, if you don't mind, I did want to mention you talked about local content, not only in the United States, we also produce locally in Brazil, in India, uh, in Europe, uh, we have local suppliers. In Australia, we announced uh, local suppliers there as well, and also in, in Saudi Arabia. So we try to provide local domestic content, again, in all the key markets around the world to help us participate in those markets and provide local jobs and, uh, and really be a, a player in each one of those markets. I think that's probably very much appreciated locally. And uh, so let's, uh, let's maybe quickly, before we come to an end, talk about, so what, what do you see are the, the three major, or the, the major challenges or, or areas you want to focus on in the, in the next few years to, to advance trackers? Right, so we want to continue to innovate with our software, maximizing the energy production. Uh, we, we have uh, software engineers on staff that are focused on availability, energy production, avoiding shade, uh, performing in weather events, staying on sun, tracking as many uh, hours of the day as possible while also protecting the tracker. So we'll continue to innovate with software to ensure availability and high energy production. Um, we've also acquired uh, a company called Ojo uh, that, that uh, offers the Earth Trust. We just launched our foundations business here at RE+. So with the Earth Trust, we're able to provide foundation solutions for hard rock uh, in the past, the EPCs in the United States have focused on the foundation solutions. Now we are providing a more end-to-end -end solution uh, with the help of Ojo. Uh, we also have uh, what we call our NX Anchor system. So the Ojo system is for hard, rocky soils. And then the NX Anchor system is more for softer soils, frost, heave, um, expansive clays. So uh, soils where you want to anchor the, the uh, foundations but we're able to use less steel tonnage. So a stronger foundation uh, with less tonnage of steel. So very interesting uh, innovations that we've launched to the market. We believe we're gonna help provide a, a more important service to our EPC and, and long-term asset owner customers by getting involved earlier, getting geotech information, corrosion information, soil information, so we can provide solutions early on in the project cycle and identify how we can optimize the tracker for those customers. Okay, wonderful. So um, solar generates around 5% of, uh, of global power these days. Uh, if we look at that picture, there's sort of a moonshot. What, what, what's there? Yeah, so we're, we're landing solar anywhere. Basically with our, with our new foundations business, there's no soil type that we cannot address with our new foundation solutions. Okay, wonderful. Excellent, Thanks, Michael, it's always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Thank you All so right. much. Take care, thank you.